Today, Kilroy goes off the shelf, literally, on war game books, or book games, or books that have games in them, whatever you want to call it. Worthington, at the end of last year, beginning of this year, they started coming out with these book games, this whole new series of putting a war game in a book so that you can play it. And they weren't the first ones though. I started thinking back and looking in my collection and say, hey, I've seen this stuff before, maybe not quite this format, but I've seen this in the form of Sandhurst War Games, a book of Sandhurst War Games by Patty Griffith, complete with four original war games. This was published in 1982. This is the earliest I can find in my collection, uh, not counting you know, choose your own adventure type games, which I'll get to, that really is a book that has war games in it. You get all the components in like this little satchel here, but the actual rules and history and context of the games are all in here. You, it, it, there's, there's a little bit of history and setup and context, but you, here are all the rules and, and talks about the counters and all those different counters and the maps and everything are in this packet here and you have to cut out the uh, counters. And so it, it's kind of a print and play almost type situation, but it is uh, a, a four complete war games in a book. And that's 1982. So going in in chronological order, the next thing that I kind of find that fits a, a, a war game in a book is probably choose your own adventure type games. Now, choose your own adventures go back quite a long time, but they mostly are fantasy or sci-fi. This one right here is history. And this one is a quasi choose your own adventure because this one here is basically setting up famous battles and then giving you a decision point. You can either choose A or B, or there might be three or four different type of decisions. And then you just measure yourself up to what happened in real history. So this really is not about branching decisions that are gonna affect your path way down the road. This is really just about looking at a certain aspect of a battle, making a decision and comparing yourself to history. But really more heavy on the history side and not as much on the you know choose your own adventure side you know if you want to choose your own adventure and 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 in a battle then the battleground general series is does more of that again these are more historical context this one's el alamin this one's arnhem and you do get to make decisions that will have effects down the road and there are some branching paths um so you do learn history here although it does potentially limits playability because you know, once you kind of solve the the like any choose your own adventure once you've kind of solved it you know what's the point of going back although there is history in here so you might want to go back just to brush it up on the history if you want to go basic choose your own adventure then there's a whole series of you choose type books and i just have a few of them the uh that are really made for kids or for young adults uh and these are your typical choose your own adventure you're going to have a, a path uh that you you know you're going to make decisions and you're going to go down that path and you eventually will get to an outcome now the interesting thing about these there's three different paths in each book there's numerous choices and there's 23 endings so there's multiple endings in these books and the three different paths are usually relatively unique it might you might be able to play opposing sides or characters from opposing sides or you know just key uh characters from the conflict like in Pearl Harbor I think you get to play a nurse in that situation so you get to see it from a different perspective and again like with most choose your own adventure there's somewhat of a role-playing element to these games because you're putting yourself in the shoes of that person in that time period or in that conflict and you're making decisions based upon that and so that's a one aspect I like about that now these are again made mainly for kids but you know if you have bad eyes like me you know the reading is actually easier in some of these things and you're going to learn some history here you're not going to learn as much history as you would in years the reason why or even in uh, battleground general but you're going to get an introduction to history now if you want to get in, uh, more of an introduction into the strategy or tactics of a situation then you might want to pull up uh, john Ant antel's uh, series which is armor attacks where you're a commander of a tank platoon uh, infantry combat where you're a commander of a rifle platoon or combat team where you're a captain of a mixed platoon. I mean, you're, you're going to have uh, armor and rifle uh, uh, underneath you and you're making decisions as a commander. And so these are going to give you a tactical situation. You know, there's maps in here. There's some, there's some uh, appendix and there's a whole bunch of trying to 
train you up on what you need to know to be a commander in this situation or a platoon leader, and you're going to be make, making decisions based on that. So th th this is, again, choose your own adventure, very kind of RPG-ish if you want to be in the you know, role play a commander, and uh, they're basically, it's modern combat. These were written in the 90s, so this is modern combat as of, of that time period. The neat thing about combat team is you're a company uh, commander, but you're also, there's there's a little bit of fog of war element in here. So sometimes you have to roll dice. So it's not just a straight making a decision and, and have a branching path. You get to roll dice, and so there's a little bit of fog of war. And it also adds to the replayability of these because, um, you know, the dice might take you down a different path at some point. So that that's kind of taking them in order of how some of these games came about. You know, which brings us to, you know, modern day uh, uh, Water uh, Worthington and all the different things they've done. They basically have uh, the latest one that just came out was uh, On to Moscow. But then they also have these solitaire versions. And these three, Gettysburg, Waterloo, and Braveheart, uh, all have a very similar type of fe uh, feel to them in that they are uh, what I call a static map situation. You're going to have a situation where this is what the map looked like at that time in the battle, and then the AI is going to make decisions. You know, you're going to roll on the AI, and that's going to tell you what dis what they do to the map, and then you're going to make decisions that do things to the map, mainly marking off units and taking units off the board. And you're going to have limited times. You can activate certain units, and you have uh, d limited activations, and you also have a time track, and you're trying to accomplish different things depending on the scenario. So these are all what I call kind of static map, and these are kind of rem reminiscent of Worthington's uh, Freeman's Farm and Chancellorsville and the like. Now Bismarck, which was the one that started this off, is more of a, is a different uh, uh, feel because this is kind of a search and chase, uh, hunt and destroy type situation where you're running the Bismarck uh, and doing its missions, and then you're going to have uh, British forces trying to hunt you down, and then the AI is basically searching different sectors or doing things to certain sectors and, and how it affects you so it's a totally different kind of feel and look and I think they're gonna be doing more uh, in this line, maybe in the Pacific at some point. Now, the latest one that just came out onto Moscow, this is even different from those uh, so far. This one is more of a kind of a feels like a states of siege type situation where you have these different uh, fronts that you're trying to move along and trying to get to Moscow. And these are the numbers you have to roll over and you can commit resources to it. And so the, the, and the AI is gonna be making decisions again and doing things to the map and then you're uh, allocating your resources and trying to move along these tracks so or these fronts so it, it feels even even more different than than the other uh, ones in this series so far and that's one of the ones the Worthington's introduction of that kind of uh, breathe life into this genre again choose your own adventures have been out there for a while but you know, th this really did bring some life into this genre, which, you know, and I started going back and looking at my collection and saying that, you know, there's been stuff out there for a while, but, you know, a lot of people don't hear about it or play it. So you got the whole line of Minden games. They have the battle game book. And these books here are that this is something that goes with the Great War Savile. The, these books here feel more like what the Sandhurst games were like. These are there. There's a game in these books, but you really need to make some components. You know, they're not they're not necessarily self-contained. There's usually counters that you have to copy or cut out or use in some of these games. Like in, in here, the Great War Savile, you can go buy the components for it. Uh, and again, these are cutout type counters that you need to do. But uh, they they require some uh, some assembly, so to speak. Uh, Siege of Leningrad really doesn't require that much, but but these are self these are book war game books uh, or war games in a book that you need to have to do some construction or assembly of some of the components. But but they're basically a full game that you can play out of the book. Uh, and again, so that mean, harkens back to the Sandhurst type games, you know, similar to that, or you know, having a, a war game in a book. Uh, is the Lambo series, and there's a whole series of, of games by Mike Lambo uh, that are again all solitaire, and they're all self-contained. Uh, you have to figure out: Do you want to mark on these books? Because there's 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 usually a map on one side, there's the AI on one side, and the map on the other, and you got to figure out: Do you want to mark on this? Or what a lot of people do, and especially these later ones in this series, he gives you sample counters that you can use. So people use minis, people use sample counters, people grab components from some of the other games. 
you know, maybe Command and Colors or the like, and they use them in these games. Now, not all of these are Hex Encounter. Some of these are grids. Some of these are more of a track, but, um, you know, this is a full uh, war game, solitaire war game in a book that has a built-in AI, and these are highly replayable. They're, they're not dependent upon a choose-your-own-adventure or a set path. It's like a war game. You can play it as much as you want to play any war game and try to get different results and, and just try to beat the AI on these things. So uh, that is the Lambo series, which have, you know, really uh, sprung up right after the Worthington came out. Um, in, in that same vein, you have the Kirkpatrick series, which this is mainly harkens back to B-17, Queen of the Skies, which is what I call a charty war game, which is, you know, you, you have charts, you make decisions on those charts, you roll dice, that takes you to more charts, and you're, you're basically creating a narrative story. It's more narrative driven. It's not so much a lot of decisions or tactical decisions that you're making from an RPG type standpoint. It's more of, you know, seeing where the charts take you and making a story out of that and so this is basically taking b17 queen of the skies and then taking it from a fighter's perspective and putting it in a book you know to play you got your board that keeps track of your crew very reminiscent of b17 you have your morale score then you have a track of where you are on the uh, in the game and then you have some charts um, you know, there's just several, a lot of these games are just several of the same thing because you can write on it and, and destroy it. I, I usually make copies. But then you have your quick reference charts and, and tells you what to do and how you do it. So these are very simple, uh, simplified, simplified versions of B-17 Queen of the Skies. Then you have... Um, uh, which this, to me, this kind of is rem reminiscent of the Lambo series. You have Ironclads uh, of the American Civil War by Patrick Real. I think this is the only game he's come out with yet, but this is basically you're an Ironclad in the Civil War. This is beautifully illustrated. I mean, it's got some great graphics in there. You've got your map board on the side. You've got your AI or scenarios objectives, but you have, you have tons of scenarios in here. There's a lot of different scenarios to play uh, and it's basically kind of learn as you go it starts off with some easier scenarios and then takes you up uh, uh, to more complexity uh, as you move on and this one has quite a few rules most of these games there's only like about five or or eight pages of rules at most this one has quite a few rules in here and feels more like <laughs> a war game uh, just in a book and not in in a box um, then you have uh, Mitchell uh, and Anna Mitchell, who's just who really this harkens back to the choose your own adventure line where these are choose your own adventure books. He started off with General Quarters, which you're commanding a submarine. I virus. Well, that you're a virus. That's kind of for sci fi. You can check out my sci fi fantasy Saturday on my channel and uh, see what I kind of cover there. And then this one is MIA. This is the latest one. And this one is probably the most RPG ish of the books that I've covered here, where you basically have a character. You're one, a lone soldier trying to get to an extraction zone, and you're going to have equipment, and you're going to have combat, and you're going to make tough choices. You might even have some moral dilemmas along the road here. But this is really a choose your own adventure. But the unique thing that he does, which is kind of similar to combat uh, team, is that there's a dice mechanism mechanism that drives the narrative forward. You're just not making decisions and branching out. The dice help make those decisions. So that adds to a lot of replayability uh, in, in that game uh, or in that space as well. So there you have it. That's a quick overview of, of what's in this space of what I've been covering. Oh, did, did, I, did I miss something? I think I missed these historical books here. Uh, Time Quest books, these are really just pure choose-your-own-adventure books. Uh, they are, they're not really military, but they're more alt-history. This one, you're trying to assassinate Hitler. This one's right after Napoleon's, uh, right after Waterloo. And this one is the gunpowder treason plot of 1605, where they're trying to blow up Parliament. These really put you in the shoes. They're very much like choose-your-own-adventure, and they put you in the shoes of that person in that time period, making decisions that are facing them. There's combat in here. It's a little bit different. You flip a coin. Uh, but it's 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 kind of a Mitchell light, right? Th these are really focusing more a lot on the history and and you know kind of learning uh, the history by playing that character or that person or being in the shoes of that person during that period. Whereas you know like the Mitchell game here, you're really more into the actual uh, role playing aspect of of making tough decisions on equipment, when to use equipment and combat and, and, and the like in that game. Anyway, so there you have it. I think I've covered everything. Hopefully I didn't jump around too much, but I thought you'd find this interesting because this is a, a 
a rapidly developing aspect of our hobby. You know, Choose Your Own Adventure has been around a little while, but these these war game books with Worthington and Lambeau and Kirkpatrick and Mitchell, these are relatively new uh, to to this uh, aspect of our hobby, and I thought that you'd find this interesting. Thanks for watching. <laughs>